This is the story of the bearded man. This man, he has a beard, a big bushy beard, and he wears it long. It's quite long. And in his beard he keeps a squirrel, he feeds it cheese, they both have a nibble. And when he sweats, the beard becomes a rag, it's a multi-purpose neck and chin dag. I'd like to tell you what a dag is, in case you don't really know. Not everyone knows what a dag is, so here it goes. The dag is the furry bits, in between the sheep's legs. It's often full of pellets of goo, and big clumps of poo. Oh no, have I gone too far, saying a swear word, in the presence of God. Is this audience offended? I'm assuming no. I didn't really think so. Everyone says poo. Well, the queen might not say so, but I'm sure she really wants to. Let's get back to the story. Back to the story. Back to the story. Let's get back to the story. Back to the story. Back to the story. Let's get back to the story. Back to the story. Back to the story. Let's get back to the story today, today. So, the bearded man was an adventurer at heart, and at this particular point in time, he'd been discovering many facts about an unknown material, which had been foretold to have seemingly magical powers. As the legend goes, it was only prophets of old to have found and harnessed the powers of this material. Only they possessed the soul qualities required to enter this other dimension without causing harm to themselves or the world itself. The bearded man Now with the squirrel in his hand Was in search of a mystical material It's kinda like kryptonite From the planet Krypton You know the place where Superman came from The planet Krypton The place where Superman was born Mystical material unknown to the regular person except for the bearded man. He has a squirrel in his beard, so he's not the regular man. Not the regular man. And so the man with the beard set out on his journey to find this mystical material and to bring great benefit to all of man and womankind. The first obstacle he faced was the great desert which surrounds this entire plain. Searching for some water Traveling Across the sand Living a life like on Kokoda The bearded man had by this stage made his way well into uncharted territory where no regular man had been before and he simply had not fathomed the sheer size of this great desert. Now finding himself in a great predicament. No food and no water. All hope is lost in the middle of the desert. All hope is lost in the middle of the desert. All hope is lost in the middle of the desert. 
Just as he began to think that there was no hope left for his survival, he felt a drop of water hit the upside of his shoe. As he looked down, some more trickled from his big burly beard. It was dense with the sweat of his brow, and he frantically scrunched up his beard like a sponge. He squeezed every drop into his water bottle and quickly guzzled it down. Right in, right in, right in on my camel. It wasn't long before he was very thirsty again, but now he was sure he was doomed. The bearded man did not want to die just yet. He had only just begun his great quest to assist all of humanity. So he longed with all his heart to the great God to please live on. It was in this pit of despair that he looked up to see something on the horizon. It was flying towards him at a tremendous speed. And it was flapping giant wings like this. Oh my goodness, it's a flying water dragon Come to save me from my dehydration Oh my goodness, it's a flying water dragon Come to save me from my dehydration 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 The dragon flew down and picked the bearded man up in his mouth, whilst vomiting large amounts of water everywhere. Much like a bird regurgitating its lunch for its offspring. You know how birds do that? Yes, feeding lunch to its children. And so they flew off into the sunset, much like Falcor and the boy from The Neverending Story. You know that movie? Mm, yes, it's a good movie, isn't it? I liked it. And then it became night time. And so they slept until the night became the day. It's only sleep, so there's nothing to say. And that's the end of part one of The Bearded Man.